Hallelujah. We bow our hands and pray. Let this calm experience the reality, the confession of our faith. For a vindicated promise that you have heard in your Tiot. We didn't know what used to make us feel the way we did. So you feel like you want to scream sometimes. You say you're bumping into them angels. They're all around you in another dimension, just like television. It took one who could see in two worlds. There's sometimes you're in this service and you feel like a, a charge of faith is coming from a battery, a surge. You're trying time. Times when you need that touch from God. You say, that's the opening. They're right here. Your angel. Behold the Father's face in heaven. You're reflecting that here. If you walk uprightly, it shows that you have a body there. Because what you are here, you are that in the spirit land. You're vulgar, evil, full of malice, love the things of the world. He says, sure, you have no body over there. God is not your father. You're not a gene of God. But if there is something, a deep calling, a crave, a longing. Felt you were so strange all your life almost. Until that day something struck the inner man. Caused you to look up and lift up your head. Cause you to recognize that you are eagle from the egg. Your amnesia begin to leave you. What's that? Theophany. You have representation in heaven. The word that you bypass has come to get you. What a great thing it is. What a great reality. Dear God, we bow our hearts in your great August presence today. We cry, Abba, Father, because the spirit of sonship has come upon us. Because your sons have sent forth the Holy Spirit into our hearts, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, to know that we are heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. We are seed that were in your loins that you desire to know and have fellowship with. Way back before there was even an atom or a molecule, before there was seraphim or cherubim, before there was angels. Oh God, we existed with you. No oh, wonder you told Job, where were you? When the morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy. When they saw the great headstone coming to cap the pyramid. Oh God, now in this day that we are living in, when time is blending with eternity, when that which is perfect is come and that which is past has been done away. This age where we are knowing as we were known. Where we are no longer seen through a glass darkly, Lord, but seen face to face. Because the mist has rolled away. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for this knowing. We thank you, Lord, that the Holy Ghost has come and claimed us because the blood was shed for us because our names are written in that book though we are trapped into this pest house because the sin of our adulterous parent Eve oh God
God, you give a promise that the woman is going to receive a seed. And in the fullness of time, you sent for your son made of a woman, made under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. God, we are chosen and predestinated unto this. God, for your great redeeming grace, by a new and living way through your precious blood made a way for us who are dying to be reunited now to come into this great invisible union in this uniting time and this is the sign of the time God and man is becoming one God great mystery of love expressed God and man was one back there, and God and man is one here again. What great love is this, Father? How we desire, dear God, that the Holy Spirit shed abroad this love in our hearts, this great elective love. When we see who you are and who we are, and what you have made us, then faith can work by this love. It can produce a faith there, God, that will not stagger through unbelief. But will be strong in faith, giving praise and glory unto God. Believe in hope against hope. And you will make us this great super race and this super church. As you made Abraham, Abraham. So dear God, what you have determined in your determinate counsel and your great foreknowledge concerning us. This great immutability of your counsel that you confirm by an oath. God, you bring it to pass. There will be a personal testimony to each and every one of us. That we'll truly live, as Paul says, the life I live now. Since that quickening power came upon him, since he heard from that theophany, I live by the faith of the Son of God. It's not I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. Like John said, great is he inside of him, and he that is in the world. They knew something, Lord. They knew that they were in you before the beginning. This great fellowship they had with the Father, this great eternal life that they declared. Oh God, they knew that these things had been made real in their hearts and lives. And they spoke of it, they taught it, it became the Bible. We don't just want it to become a religious teaching, some theology that we can take and explain in words. But God, when we have that same experience, we give testimony, then the scripture comes alive again to prove you are the same yesterday and today. And that we are the children whose hearts have been literally turned back to the faith of the fathers because the same kind of people is having the same kind of experience under the same word, by the same spirit to prove that Alpha has become Omega. May you grant it, Lord. This is that day. Let it be declared. Let the Spirit give witness and may this be, show forth your victory and the reason of your death. And may your name be glorified and be admired in all of that believe that you fulfill the great work of faith with power. We come today desiring more of that, this great prevailing power of the revelation of the world. This which can make us Lord uh, the written word made manifest. You don't need a new Bible, a new translation, but a fresh revelation by which we could become that living word and do the greater work. Let it be, Father. You said, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. Fill us, Lord. We hunger, we thirst after this. As the heart panted after the water book, 
to plant our tilt our soul for the living God. We don't want a historical God. We don't want some futuristic God. We want the living God. The I am the present tense God. And make your word personalized in our lives. Grant it, Lord. Let it come so close today. We can get a grip upon it. We leave this place change. Because that's what happened to Jacob at Peniel when he got a grip upon it. He looked in the face of God. He said, I see God face to face. We know that this is the age of face to face, Lord. We will see face to face, he says. Hallelujah. Walk away here. Prince is power before God. That's a pillar to be Come a butterfly right here. Oh God. This great transforming power we can discover within ourselves. Let this be the portion of your bride, of your children in this hour. We might bring on this great day when we shall be changing a moment in the twinkle of an eye. Bless all that's gathered here throughout the region, Father. With these things I ask, leave and direct us now in the ministering of it. And may give us the faith that's designed to bring to our heart. We might live and prove your word. That you are God who keeps your promises. And you're not guilty of a breach of promise. Grant it, Lord, we ask. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Lord, we can bless you. Certainly happy to be in his presence. I'd like to invite your attention to the book of St. Luke, chapter 17, and 2 Peter, chapter 2. St. Luke 17, 2 Peter, chapter 2. Trust that you all feel fine and you're happy and you're retaining that word in your knowledge. We had such a great week, speaking here last week on the Eagle and the Pyramid, the seven stages of enough walk with God. And then the week, we look at that service, God's Eden and Satan's Eden. And then Friday night, we are speaking about our worship and our walk, continued from Sunday. And these great things, as we worship God, sing these songs, and creating this atmosphere. More and more we break out of the pet house. We begin to travel. Quickened like Elijah when he had to run. He had, he had chariot. And then a little while after that, then he was caught up. So he was moving in a certain direction. But before that, he was at the brook being ministered hidden food in a time of famine, in the hour of judgment. That's the type of this day, a, rupture, a church is going to go into rapture. I've been taken into a secret place and shot away. It's dead all around. But angels is bringing hidden food. Is that right? Blessed be his wonderful name. But there's a great old point, a form and lack of rain. A cloud has ascended. Amen. And that is to bring restoration. Just like it was back there. But God in a great showdown gave witness that he had restored all things by a prophet. There were 7,000 who didn't bow their knees. What a great time. All these things are happening, friends. Don't forget, I always learn to keep God in your knowledge. What God has spoken to us, not what we think and what we think we're going through. You don't know what you're going through until you see it in the Word. You don't even know what it means until you see it in the Word. It will just be, I'm going through this, I better do me this, I have this, I want this, I'm fed up with myself, and you talk like a Trinidadian. When you see it in the Word, and you know your call, and you see what you call unto, and you see the great potter, and you're under the hands of the master pot, and you have you on the wheel, and the vessel is being formed, Amen. Fit for the master's use, prepared unto every good work. Amen. Sanctified. Then you know a vessel of honor. 
a chosen vessel to bear his name, then you understand what you're going through. You have to see it in the light. If Joseph looked at that, he said, man, these ungrateful bunch of people, I am not real people no more. I tell the man a dream, the man promised, he didn't keep your word. And he looked like a person in prison who feels disappointed. But if he's walking in a vision that God had shown him, he was called unto glory. He was coming from stage to stage. He was just at the moment of glorification. He was learning to possess his soul in patience before he burst out of that prison house. Amen. And that ministry where every knee had to bow. Is that right? Sometimes things look a certain way. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. How many knows that? That's right, friends. You have to keep your eyes on the word. You are called according to a purpose. That's good advice, I think. I believe that's the grace of God to give you that advice. A man can stand up here and talk all kinds of things in his fleshly mind. But when the Holy Spirit can drop in there and speak to you, then that's different. That becomes eternal. St. Luke 17, verse 26. And as it was in the days of Noah, the Greek word is Noe, but it's very no Hebrew, Old Testament is Hebrew, New Testament is Greek, you know that. So shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man, Jesus. You ever read that the Bible is written in red? And he's teaching here, and he's giving a parallel now. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. In other words, he's saying that day is going to repeat itself. There's nothing new under the sun. History repeats itself. Ever so often, a cycle of time comes around. And it, an age reproduces itself. Is that right? Everything in Genesis comes in Revelation. Genesis is seed. And Jesus, looking back at seed in Genesis, is prophesying what the last days will be like. They did eat, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage. That's Genesis 6. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark, that's Genesis 7. And the flood came and destroyed them all. And so he's preaching. His inspiration. His scriptural inspiration. He knows the plan. He knows that that is going to produce itself. He knows what Genesis means. He is the word. He's the very author of the word. He's the one who put the seeds there. He himself knows he's the son of man that's going to come back in the last days to be revealed. And so he's speaking it. And laying it here in the Bible for us. And when that time comes, we can know what to expect. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, he goes from Genesis 6 and 7 to Genesis 19. Watch him, he's in the Bible. They, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Isn't it strange how he, he, he's speaking, but you have this secret, the seven seal secret. Seal up. He's giving the seven trumpet, but you have the seven seal secret seal up. He didn't tell you about no, Enoch. He didn't tell you about Abraham. But he said, Noah and Lot. You get that? He's a master teacher. He knows to hide it from the wise and the prudent. Amen. He's laying it, he's laying it here. Watch. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which shall be upon the house top and is stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. And he picks up Lot's wife and he leaves Sarah out. Again, sealing up the mystery. Lot's wife had a body change. And Sarah had a body change. Think of it. My, fire come upon the two of them. Is that right? That's right. But Lot's wife get a different kind of fire. And she had a different kind of change. Sarah had holy fire and put on Eden beauty. Is that right? My. Who's 
whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you, in that night, there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. The one taken shall be taken and the other left. The one, the one, the chosen one, the elected one, the prepared one. Notice that. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles. Eagle age, prophetic age, because Noah day and Lot day was eagle time. Is that right? And this age is eagle time again. It's repeating. Wheresoever the bodies there, the eagles be gathered together. What a destruction in both places. Both places there. Systems of those places passed away. Second Peter chapter 2. Verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them the chains of darkness to be reserved under judgment, and spared not the old world, save, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the wall of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. My, Peter picks up what Jesus is speaking about here and he's showing us more how God didn't spare that old world but how he saved another eight person. Preach of righteousness, bringing the flood upon the world of the ungodly, turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example. To who? To who? The people who live in the age where it come back at that age. So the people who live in this day have an example because say, as it was in that day, so it shall be in this day. So before it happens, you see the example. Is that right? And you know what is coming. Because the mere fact the world come back like Sodom. And look at this last few months here. Homosexual marriages increased almost 200%. People were rushing over, over, over 100 an hour in San Francisco. These are 60 a week. Think of it. Make it illegal. People going to Canada, fleeing to Toronto to, to get a married and everything else. See? How many of that's one of the end time signs? That's one of the, is that what brought the fire? That's right. Then is that so, friend? Then watch how that fire is going to come again. Watch the people are in the spirit of judgment. People are in the condition for judgment. Because the same Son of Man has come. Jesus said, Peter said, yeah, we are looking at it. We are reading the Bibles around us. Turn the city of Son and Gomorrah into ashes. He turned it into ashes. My great big skyscrapers. Next day it was ashes. Before it became skyscrapers, it was dirt. They pulled minerals out in the village. Then God turned fire and put it back. Changed it back. Is that right? Turn it into ashes. The world passed away. Think of it. Making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Those that after should live ungodly. In other words, they had seen a prophet Abraham. They had seen a prophet Noah. And yet, they live ungodly. The prophet came to bring the revelation of God to take them out from ungodly to become godly. They didn't have a go ungodly means they have a the right concept of God. Some people think, prophet to everybody, say, God is a good God, God is a good God. He said, I'm getting sick and stand up my head and say, God is a good God. He said, God is a God of wrath too. He said, God is a God of prosperity, God is a God of blessing. And yet over and over people 
crossing the wood back and forth, hacking the pieces, twisting the wood to suit their own self, and, and, and then take away the, con the, 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 the conviction from people and keep them living anyhow, sweet thinking they're going to heaven, deceiving the people. Until the people come to our place now, somebody will feel about judgment, they feel you're coming to disturb them. They, 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 they don't want to hear that, they feel like that is not proper preaching. But it's an age of judgment, friends. It's not mercy. Mercy is finished. It's passed. It's gone. It's an age of judgment. From the time you come down as judge, from the time you show the rock, from the time you show the promise, from the time you open the shelves, there's a judgment. In the, from the time they get under the token of perish, judgment is in the land. What mercy it has is for those who get under the word of the prophet. That's what mercy it has. But as far as the dispensation, brother, there's going to a white way. The, the, the prophet has come and gone a generation now. But think of it. I'm not saying the door closed. Don't, don't, don't carry me what I'm not saying. I, I'm conscious of what I'm saying. And it could be closed too. Don't tell you it's closed. He said they'll go along preaching. Thinking of anything. And they wonder if the fire and the rock begin to fall and they realize they're left behind. Foolish virgins who had come out at midnight came back looking. And the door was shut and the wise went in. There's not plenty of time. You can't say, well, I'm the message. No, do you have the Holy Ghost? Are you living overcoming right now? Are you the word? Do you have rap? Are you walking rapt in faith? How many years in the message? Are you over the word? You see, you can get you can get hard with it, you can get straight with it. When you get straight with it, all the little kind of frivolous things disappear. Because sometimes people they want to leave the word in a way where you don't measure them. Once you don't measure you, it's not the word. God weighs man by his word, friend. Every man is weighing the balance. You don't weigh them by my estimation, your estimation. God put all of us in the scales of the word and weigh us. We line up with the word. That's that's what it is. Bye. And delivered, verse 7, just lot. Vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For the righteous, for that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul. That righteous man, his righteous soul, vexed from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth. How to deliver. The Lord knew it how to deliver. How? Not the Lord knew it to deliver. The Lord knew it how to deliver. It never provided way for deliverance. Is that right? No angel just come out the old world. He come out the old world by a plan of salvation. Israel they come out of Egypt just like it. They come out of Egypt by a plan of salvation. Is that right? God has a provided way for everything he does. The Lord said how to deliver the godly. And that's why I say the godly. Because the godly recognizes God's ways. Out of temptations and reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. But the Lord bless me with you, have see. My. I don't want you to think that I'm here to preach you into hell. I'm not here for that. But I just can't help in reading the scripture. Feel that coming down. I would like to speak this morning on discovering our transforming power within. Discovering our transforming power within and knowing that we are built to possess a lower transformation. If you if you're gonna if you look at we we talk about change and theophany calling, we're singing about it and changing robes. You have to have something to change you. The law has to be in you to begin with. You have to have the potentials for transformation if you're going to be changed. You listen to me? Listen close. 
The caterpillar change don't come from outside, it's come from inside. The eagle that's come out of the egg because in the egg has the eagle potential inside it. And so you are what you are by the grace of God. God made one seed to be wheat. God made another seed to be something else. And so the law in the seed is, is going to bring forth of its kind. There's a power in the seed to change it into the species that is ordained to be. In the acorn, have the potential to be an oak tree. You, you don't have to beg the acorn to become an oak. You never plant the acorn. You never put the acorn in the environment that, that the acorn is ordained to be in that is necessary for its growth and development. Is that right? That's why man will take the sperm and the egg in a laboratory and put in a test tube and hatch it. But after a while, it's just having implanted in the woman. Is that right? Because the baby can't grow in the test tube and come out of the test tube and go through the, the labor and the stress of the No, it can't do that. It, it, it needs to be developed within the womb of the mother or a woman. Because a woman of the bed and ground where the, it is designed by God for that sperm and egg in union to grow and develop from an embryo, in their fetus, in their child, until it comes forth. The same way you can even take the egg and put it in an incubator, it's going to hatch. The incubator is not hatching the egg, or it's not putting the potential in the egg, rather. It's just creating the conditions necessary for the potential and the power of transformation that is already in the potential to change that uh, potential into an eagle. Is that right? That's about dog sitting on that egg for 21 days and, and give it the warmth that needs, they're going to hatch it. That's why the hen knows that that egg has, you don't see no hen who hasn't been with the male bird sitting down on a bunch of eggs. But it's time to do her work and she's going to become a layer. And she only lay. She is young on the mix. Because she knows it, it is fertile. She has to be the male bird for it to be fertile. And when the church is mated with Jesus Christ, the male bird, then the church has life in it. Otherwise, a bunch of church members, after a while, they get a nest full of rotten eggs. If, if you put that kind of egg where she has been with the male bird, and she's still that for 21 days, and now we don't see ministers sitting over at church and the church getting rotten and rotten and rotten and the, the nest of the flow is fornication and pollution and all kind of different things. But you say, well, hmm, I know that. You see, I ain't talking about eggs somebody bring and throw in the nest, you know. I'm talking about egg that the real hen who with the male bird lay in the nest. That's why sometimes she can't even get the snow on some of them other egg. Because she, them, they, them other egg knows they come from she and she knows that egg can come from she sometimes. Come out in your nest. And so it gets polluted. But anyone that's born from her, but they come in with life in them. You get what I'm saying? And that's why we have to, uh, we talk about life. And how life comes. And it takes union to bring life. Is that right? Discovering our transforming power. You know, the more I preach these things and go into these things, I, I wrestled yesterday until I had to go and sleep early. For the first day, maybe about 20 years, I went to sleep early. 
After a while, I just put in a book and didn't get book shipped up this morning. Because somehow I, I felt the Spirit of Jesus with me that so many people have been left out and so many people have been hurt and I, I plan my mind I'm going to have a couple of youth services or so help strengthen the believers and help catch some who are missing out in preaching this way and on, on some of these things to get down to the level uh, of some and that's why I'm trying to take a roundabout way today to come into some of these things I would like to go a little slower because you know, it's great to know we're going to be changed and to see the mystery of it in the world and Enoch and the seven steps and these things and the theophany and the glorified body and how the sperm comes through and it's great to see these things. But then, here we are faced with things in our lives to live. And so now we're looking for these promises and we are not conscious that we have a part to play as well. And there's things that you must know. And there's things that you must discover by revelation and experience. You just can't take it by faith and say, man is so. No. You might have it in knowledge and then you might speak it. And somebody who's looking for knowledge will admire you. You can say it back. But somebody looking for virtue. That's why you know you are big going on a plastic flower. Because a bee no a plastic flower, they have no nectar. A plastic bee will grow on a plastic flower. But a real bee will look for a real flower. Because you know there's a reality there. And that's why in, in this case, you know then that it must be something that you experience, that God has made real to you. And when you talk to people sometimes, you realize how if we don't take time with the word and get under a certain atmosphere to make self-discovery. Self-discovery is important. Because part of your life and experience, God knows you need self-discovery. God is telling you something and you're hearing it. I know you can't see it until you experience it and know it by revelation. And that's why after he give you the word, you have to come and give you experiences where the word now become a confirmed word in your life, a revealed word, and then you have a personal testimony because the word now that you're hearing and speaking of is being made actual in your experience. The word is being interpreted in you, and then you become a reflection of the very word. No, that's the that's the part where victory comes in. That's why knowing it, you can know it and still be in defeat. But victory comes in now when you can reflect the word because the word is becoming alive to you. Because you didn't settle just for understanding. You didn't settle for the information of it. You wanted to see that word become you because that word was speaking about you. You see, God is really speaking to a crave. You know the prophet tells the story about the boy who was desiring sulfur, body lacked sulfur, like our bodies lack rapture in faith. Our bodies lack the Holy Spirit. The reason why we go and sin, why? We lack the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit there? You got to check you right there. Is that right? You have the Holy Spirit there? You got to show that thing coming in before it comes. Why? You're living in your sense. A dead rock doesn't give you the line of, he's just smelling from a distance. As long as that deer is built to smell, he don't have power, he don't have aggression, he not ferocious as the lion. But uh, he's lion meat if you meet a lion toe to toe. But the thing is, God give him a sense to protect him. He gave him speed, fleetness of feet, and he gave him a sense of smell. And that fella, he could smell lion, giraffe, buffalo, wolf, hyena, coyote, jackal. He could smell them from the time they come in. And that knows, brother, if you could smell curry and say that is not curry, that is beef, or that is barbecue, or that is not this perfume, that is that perfume, or this smoke, and you ain't seen it, you ain't hearing it, you ain't touching it, you just by smelling it, and say, hey, I'm smelling gas. You can't see gas, but you smell it. Somebody, oh yeah, well, you had the stove. They just sank on. 
Well, the same way you can detect that because no stick of discernment. Then think of how super discernment that they have living in that realm. And that deer living in the sense of smell, but the day he gets out of that, he's He'll be as dung in a few days upon the grass. And even brother ants who that fellow would have shake off and mash feeding on that dung. Because the land don't feel up for him. He going down the food chain. And he go right through the cycle and come back fertilizer. You get what I'm saying? So the thing is, God gives us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is a super sense. And the prophet says, when, when a man is walking the Spirit of God, brother, he can detect things like that. You try to receive that man, move that man somewhere, even though he can't pick you up yet exactly where you're on, but when that comes, at that sense goes, oh, something's funny about you. Then watch him now, if, he, if he really anointed now, he takes a parable and goes straight to your spirit. But you, he got higher on the back foot, he got higher. You will admit that this man is a different kind of man. This man here, I can't take no chance to this man. This man, he sees about me and then I want somebody to tell him about me. See? Why? Because he's going to take that wood, that, that sharp sword, he's going to take that, that wood, that flashlight, and get on in, in, in your soul, and get on the dark places of your life, and shine, shine that light on you. But you see, big man, 250 pounds and a sweat. Why? Because that wood will pick you up if, if that man is in that sense. No, that's what spiritual life is. That's why people, you know, come around and play things and do things. And sometimes they don't know. They think everybody go to church. A lot of people go to church, but not everybody. Some people just walk with God. See? So when you get there in the Word, because that, that's what the Word is about. The Word is about power. This is the kingdom of God. The, the Word is about light and darkness. There's light. So that's why the first thing moves. Sometimes that a person that dressed different, they would have sketched that. That person, you know, but a walk or things change or maybe a certain body language, they would have picked that up like that. That's right. And you don't get you, you don't get along like that. You want to walk in a place with God where you can really move in the world. And that's why I, I, I felt I like should bring this from the way I'm passing because I know many of you have that in you as a child of God. That don't come with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost comes to that to bring that out to you. That comes in you before you get the Holy Ghost. That is seed with life planted in your dirt by the foreknowledge of God. And the Holy Ghost comes as water. The same one who plants the seed in your dirt comes to water the seed inside of you. And then because why? He put a seed in you that has power to transform itself. God don't tell you, you have to become the world. And if you go in the world, it's about you. Oh God, I'm going to hell. I can't live that life. No, 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 no. The devil is taking the word and driving you the wrong way. God is not telling you that. If you are a child of God and God bringing that word to you, he might be circumcising you. He might be cutting away all kind of creepers around your life that want you to grow deformed. Because if it's corn, you, you have a garden, you plant your corn, and a big branch from some tree fall, and it drop about on tree, uh, corn trees. Then that corn can't shake that thing up. So that corn is growing, but it's growing slow. It can't grow straight. It was planted straight until that thing come upon it. Or it has some vine there, where it is planted now, come up now and start to wrap around that corn, then there's a power restricting it. It's a power deforming it. It's a power that is choking it. And the corn can't deliver itself out. That's why a farmer has to be looking and seeing, but that is corn. That is not the brother. That's an influence trying to hold his brother back. That's not that sister. That's an influence trying to hold her back. That's, that's why it's a dangerous thing to let anybody deal with people, you know. Because sometimes, when you don't have the German, the eyes to see that, you go and you even put further away 
and God know how to deliver. God know how to deliver. See, you need resilience because here is a person trying to go right, but they lack what it takes. So somebody know the husband had to come out and tell how this big old branch get here. You like from this old tree. And that is something like some, some kind of a, a branch from a tree, a family tree. Get on your corn where you planted. Some old dead branch. And then it's pinning down your corn. You get what I'm saying? I went and called that family tree to do that. It's so much inside of that tree. In the stomach, so in the tree hollow. So a little shaking pass, it has no root to go in the ground and get strong. So it break a branch, boom, it falls. And that's why you, you, you have to be careful of what's falling in your garden. You get what I'm saying? And then sometimes again, too, in the environment that you have all kinds of hidden things. In the earth, that's come out after a while. So when that rain starts to fall, it brings up everything. I know see some old sly vine come. And brother, somehow in the cleaning of the pot, that the air reach, that the air, by the time it reach that row of corn, it, it done as some vine wrap up that corn that you, if you, if you expect that to grow healthy, no, it's trying to bring forth corn, eh? But the way it wrap and it bung the thing, it takes a minute to break it. Now, in your lives, many times in your lives, it has things like that. that it, it don't originate with you, but it's influences around you. Pressures around you, you can't deal with. And those pressures start to work its way towards you. And then you get under the influence of the pressure. And they got a wrap around you. And next thing, you trying to free yourself from it. And you have the strength to free yourself from it. Because the thing gets too close to you. Remember when Paul was trying to help the, the mayor? And Elimus the sorcerer. But then the poor guy said two words. And that man of the injections over here to destabilize the man's face. Paul take the gooseneck hole out, man. And he chopped that thing away for a season. Is that right? That's right. And brother, you watch the word. When Jesus see what was happening there, he's going to be aware of the level and the scribes and the Pharisees. Is that right? Why? A husband man does what you plant. You get me? I've got to give you a revelation. You know what I'm saying? Right now I'm talking about influences and pressures that has a deforming effect upon your life. It's not you, you're trying to free yourself, you're trying to wrestle with it, and you have the, you don't have the strength to break through from it. Can you have enough faith this morning to see a man with a gooseneck hole in the garden? And do you believe you are corn? Then if you are corn, you believe you are corn, then you have potential in you to bring forth a grain in the image of the Father. Is that right? Yeah. But there's influences there. Turn to Romans 12. Discovering our transforming power within. We have it within us. You are not what you used to be. Something has been changing you. You ain't fully changed, but something has been changing you. God help me. You get too evangelistic here sometimes. What happens? You lose sight of the mystery. Romans 12, verse 1. Prophet used to preach God for the transform power transformation is where I'm, I'm, I'm working with. 
I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. He said, I beseech you, I beg you, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. I beg you to do it. Holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, this cosmos, this whole order, as it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Lot. That was the cosmos. But what happened to the cosmos? It passed away. God destroyed it. But when that world passed away, Lot keep on living after that world went. Noah keep on living after that world went. You get me where I'm coming from now? But those who couldn't escape that world, those when a godly prophet was bringing a message to show the ungodly how they were conformed to the world they were living in. And that world, what they conformed to, they were reflecting that world. And unless they didn't get a new birth to deliver them out of that world, they were going to pass away when that world passed away. You get me? And be not conformed to this world. This world of a mole. And that word conform is it, like, it squeezes you into the shape of the world. The world of a way to speak. The world of a way to dress. The world of a way to act. The world have a way to conduct themselves. The world have certain desires and things that they do for enjoyment and pleasure. And they make that the standard and they try to influence everybody to be part of that. And when you're not part of that, they say, you're not in the fashion. You're not in the thing. You're out of the thing. It's an influence in the world. The world itself has an influence on it. It wants you to be like it. It's a deforming thing. So you be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It is start with your thoughts. That is why God presents the word to you. The entrance of his word brings what? Light and illumination. It begins to wake you up to see what it is you're looking at, what it is you're putting value upon, what it is. You think that it's making you feel a better person. It's false. It's deceiving. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. He said, don't be conformed to this world. But be transformed by the new of your mind. That's what Noah was trying to bring to them. Noah was bringing a message to them. This world, friends, come from Cain. And this is not the original civilization. Adam, you know, was in the true civilization. And this thing is bringing more and more death. This is the world that comes from the tree of knowledge. And they laugh at Noah. And they laugh at him. Because they thought they were progressing. They thought they were advancing. They thought the world had made them better. They were exalting themselves in the knowledge and the achievements and these things. And then Noah says, no, your world has lived. It started as a baby. When Cain built the first city, he said, then you, you, you come in the time of Lamech and them. He said, but now this 2,000 years, you're old and you're going to die. God have weighed you, you're going to die. And for the first 2,000 years, something happened. God was going to pass away. God sent a prophet with a message saying, this cosmos is going to pass away. But God make a way to deliver the people out of it. God, by achievement, get this, Enoch built a pyramid and Noah built an ark. God given revelation to his people and you take the pyramid and the ark is the whole mystery. Enoch went up, Noah come back in the new world. You know what I'm saying? Enough went up seven steps. Noah showed you two, three stages. How the, how the ark is built. Noah showed how the tree had to be cut down. Noah showed the sap that put you down without. 
make an atonement, keep the judgment out, and give security for those inside. No sure how the dove comes to go back into the new world. You put the two together, you have the whole mystery. They live in a time when God was giving revelation to people who was living in a time when the world and the civilization had come to an end and was passing away and they had a dispensational prophet telling them about another civilization. We have had, Luther didn't bring such a message. Wesley didn't bring such a message. The Pentecostal didn't bring such a message. No messenger brought such a message until this messenger came. When this messenger came, we were back in the days of Noah. Is that right? We were back in the age when science was at its climax. Now they're back to cloning and genetic engineering. And now they have destroyed the earth and they've destroyed the animals and they destroyed the trees and destroyed the human race and they destroyed the church and they even breed the church with politics and, and philosophy and, and entertainment and they bring out a beautiful church. You watch young women singing, boy, they could sing. You watch them men preach, boy, they have showmanship, they have a platform performance. You watch the crowd, boy, you could see how dignified and intellectual and scientific they are. Why? They interbreed the high breed it and they make it more beautiful, but it has no life. There's no originality to it. You know what it is? It's a deformed species. And since it was not like the original, even though it looked pretty and nice, God, anything that is not original is perverted. You get that? It's man trying to improve upon God. Now catch this. That is the church. What about you? The church is a collective bunch of people. In other words, the earth is filled with whiskey distilleries and tobacco companies. Is that right? In every nation, we are Western tobacco right here up Champlain. We are Angus too, right below Lavender. On our earth. And then you see the man walking with the pack in the pocket and the flask in the back pocket. And you have it right on this earth too. Why? He's reflecting his world. Can you think that far? You gotta think with me, you know. Where the carcass is, there the eagles we gather together. You gotta fly with me when you come here. Look at the earth. Full of its casinos. Full of its gambling dens. All over the earth. Trinidad get more casino in these last times. Is that right? Yes. What do you want to pack a car in the back pocket here? He lotto here, he poke a chip here. He reflecting his world. Yes. You get me? Yes. The earth full of the modeling schools and the call girls and the brothels. And then watch the man here moving with his escort. You know, you know now they get they, they get a new word for it now? Escort. They polish the thing with prostitution language and they call it escort. And they're offering Colombians and Venezuelans too. That is the drawing crowd. Salsa. Look good when you go in a hotel. You know what I'm saying? They are reflecting their world. They are part of the world. The world set the standard. The world gives them the influence. And the world squeezes them into it. And they become conformed to their world. Watch the over a thousand denominations, Christian kind, and then the other kind, unchristian. You can get from Lodge, Mason, you can get Baha'i, you can get New Age, you can get Hindu, Muslim, you can get all kinds. Any, any choice you want. And then, that's institutions, and then you have the people here, out in the street. They are waiting in the watchtower book on the earth, moving through the street. You see me that the big institution there. I'm giving you a picture. I'm giving you a picture of the world, what it is. 
I'm giving you a picture how you become conformed to your world. It is get past your defenses, seeing and hearing, but on its way into your heart. Once you have the right defense systems, and your defense systems are high tech by the Holy Spirit in the super sense to alert you to what you see and you're hearing. Every time I get down here is conception. Because I find nothing so wrong with that. And it, it, it's some kind of good. And you're taking a lie and a little live and start to live in the whole lot. You know what I'm saying? Look what the churches end up today with the kind of music and things. I was talking to a young man from a church right in the back down here, and he's talking about, you know, about the calypso and the dub and the reggae and all the different things, what it is, and how, you know, that is the way God wanted the people to worship and so on, and, you know, and we were, we, we were having that conversation. Well, after a little while, he realized, you know, he wasn't talking to a theologian. Discovery. He said, don't be conformed, be transformed. You have something in you to change you. Don't let this world change you. You have something that God wants to change you by. And, the, and there's an influence in the world trying to get to you, but you don't have their sight. You, you can't detect it. And so... The false sense of feeling. And you see a nice young girl come along, next me she's going to drift into the world. See a young boy come along, next me she's going to drift into the world. Next me she's going to go after the things that look so appealing. And next thing, all of a sudden you begin to think funny about the things of God. You want to hide and do that. You don't want them to see him. You don't want them give. Yeah, you know. It's like now you're getting bold towards sin and you're getting cagey towards righteousness. Something is happening. Deceit. Deceit. And you have to watch that when, when, it, when it's stressed. No, that is striking the whole world, eh? But the thing is, some people have a repellent. They have an immunity. You see things like, like it's on them, but it can't draw no blood. If, if it draws that blood, it's dead. If you have a toxin in that, that, that is anti to that thing that's trying to come at it. That's when Satan jumped on Jesus, so, and, and Jesus hit him the world. He fly back off and take off for a season. Because it wasn't Caiaphas who wanted me to jump on. See? So when you look and you see, there is an immunity that we need. There is an immunity that we need. Because these things are not fairy tales. As I go slow with you, I want you to see how real the word is. Because this word will uncover every little thing that you think is appealing out here. And then I'll show you where that comes from. And if you're, not, if you're not honest, to say, that's the word Gabriel. If you're not honest to receive that, what is going to happen? You are going to try to evade the word and not even realize when that word is coming to you that the grace of God saying, my son, my daughter, don't be trapped in that. God, you're born to live for something higher than that. First John 2.15. Quickly. So follow me here. Eh? 
from Luke 17, 30, as when they are Noah, as when they are Sodom. Then 2 Peter 2, it was how that, that world, the city was turned to ashes, God make an example of what he's going to do when the age come back. That age has come back. We know that. Then Paul is saying, don't be conformed to the world. In no age. But in this age, we can identify that that world that existed in the time of Noah and Sodom is the same world here today. We are going to have the same kind of deliverance. We are receiving the same kind of message. Is that right? And the same thing happens to that civilization, the ungodly, is going to happen again. 1 John 2, 15 to 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. It don't say the Father does not love him. It says the love of the Father is not in him. But the Father loved all him. Even when we were in the world, and we had loved the world, the Father had loved us. But the love of the Father was not in us, because we were not in obedience to the Father. If you love me, you will be my commandment. We are in rebellion to the Father. For all that is in the world, and then he begins to break it down for you, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Get this now. And the world passeth away. Don't be conformed to it. Why? It passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. If the world is going to pass away and he's going to abide forever, then the, he will outlive that world. And he'll have to have another world to abide in. You get what I'm saying? So Paul is saying, be you transformed. He says that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. He that doeth the will of God abideth forever. He that proves what the will of God is. He that does the will of God abideth forever. I want to read one more with you. Uh, Matthew 6. Look at the world. We are breaking down the world here for you. The same world we see. We go outside, Port of Spain, San Fernando, Cuba, Chaguanas, this is the world you meet. Eating, drinking, buying, selling, you know, sin, pleasure, entertainment, religion, it's all the air. Princess Tongue, wherever you go, the thing is here. Matthew 6, verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. This is Jesus teaching now. What you shall eat, or what you shall drink. Just eating and drinking in that, in that time, that will pass away. Why? That was the thing to put a priority on. That's the thing that they, they became so take nothing. Nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Take no thought for your life, and take no thought for your body. Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink. Nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. He's doing your body and your life. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? He's teaching values in the world. This is a Luke 17 shows the world was characterized eating and drinking, and then Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. There were two women, I'll, I'll, I'll get to it in a while, in that time, I said two of them had a body change. Remember Lot's wife, and remember Sarah Abraham's wife. Holy Spirit never named Lot's Lot wife, but the Holy Spirit named Abraham's wife. Holy Spirit said Abraham's wife was an unbelief all the way down. Just before the fire fall, she gets saved. 
You see how God is so perseverant. The woman can't be victory. She can't believe that she's a good woman. She ain't coming to adultery. She ain't going to war. She's an intelligent husband. But she just can't have faith in the promise. Which is what comes said. What God said about her. Not what she tried to be as a woman. But what God put her in the earth for. To be the mother of kings and nations. Now watch something. And Jesus is teaching here. He said, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat and what you shall drink. Nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than the meat and the body and the raiment? Behold the fowls of the air. He give, he give my example. He said, nail on his point. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in bands. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Now he's not saying... The fowl doesn't sow a gallon band, I mean they should work, you know. He's talking about people who take in thought for to, to eat and to drink and to wear. He's dealing with the tears, the anxiety, the pressures that they get under, their importance that they attach to that, the amount of the years and the lifetime that they spend trying to get these things. The realm that they allow the enemy to hold them in and lock them in and the life just revolve around food and clothes and shelter and they can't break out of that. That is what he's dealing with. So that's why those people in there, they have time for no message. That's why they have time for Abraham. Message. That's when the angels came. They don't even know the angels came. Angels that come to bring open a mystery and bring a power that the vile old mad body of Abraham and Sarah was going to be changed. Yeah. And as they sit under them thunders and that angel opening up them hidden secrets of redemption, Abraham and Sarah was catching faith to be changed and coming to a knowledge of the second cycle and the season and the return of country to my life and the dynamics that will change and bring the promised land. Yeah. And the rest of the world was eating and drinking. You get what I'm saying? And that world was fixing to pass away. And they didn't even know that world was fixing to pass away. And the angels that come and we build the Abraham. And Abraham says, shall the judge of all the earth destroy the righteous and the wicked? And he begins to see and cry. And they're eating and drinking and laughing. And he's crying and pleading, oh God, my family down there. You catch it now? Conform to the world. We've been opening these things these, these, since the beginning of this year for you on another level. From the earthly house to the Father's house. Pre existence, earthly journey to our destination. See? All these things. Bringing it in up seven steps. From the realm of mortal beings to the immortal beings. And while the elected call of this year, people are so conformed to this world. They are so squeezed into that mold and shape and that world that they re are reflecting, a world that is passing away of people who is already called out and say, we are fellow citizens of above. We have no desire to go back into that country. We came out of that country and we seek a better one. A what? Continuing city. That one will continue. Because our people who go abiding forever, they want a place that will abide forever. The conscience of eternal life is you can't have eternal life and want to live in a temporal place. Your life does tell you I, I, I ain't comfortable here. This, this is for me. Uh, 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 the, 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 the life that makes you blend in here is a life of here. That's why, can't you hear your theophany calling? Is a perfection calling you? The boy was eating the razor in school, the mother called him. Where well, are your pencil, boy? No rubber. Next day, no rubber. Next day, no rubber. Next day, next day. He's done four boys from crying. Come in school with teacher. Mommy, you have room. That boy's screwed up the rubber. 
Mom, I'm going to be a little bit of 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 a little bit <laughs> you only see silver. <laughs> this is a Bobby. Tommy is eating. He's the pedal of a bicycle. She like, oh God, what in the child, a monster? She take him to the doctor. When they examine the boy, the boy was crave for sulfur. His body calling for sulfur. So the boy eating anything to bring the satisfaction for sulfur. Now the prophet says what? Rapture and faith is in the message. And if you are crave to bring the rapture, and you are crave for rapture and faith, and say, you know, I, I read a book with four pages the other day. I like that one, one in a million. It only has four pages. Future home and cry the mystery of God reveal. Ooh, I can't read that. You are no crave. Your crave is big enough. When that boy finds them little small lead pencil, yeah, satisfied. He starts to hunt bigger one. He gets his seals. He gets his churches. He gets conduct all that induction. He the Hebrews. But so what's going on? He had a crave for rapture and faith. He hear rapture and faith laying there. That was the hunger of his soul. If you have a hunger for it, you will feed upon it. Because you are what you eat. You say we feed upon the unfilm. You know, it's strange. We, are, we feed on the unfilm, but what is the son of man? And then you're not a son of man at all. No, no, no. When you feed on this, you become him. She's him revealer. You don't feed on him and you can get trouble and somebody say he in bright form. Because when you eat that, you know he in bright form inside of you. My. Woo. So take no thought for your life what you shall eat or you shall drink. Now remember the rich man, he feared sumptuously. And he was well clothed, is that right? But he takes so much care for what he was going to eat and what he was going to drink. And when his earthly journey was over, he ended up in hell. Is that right? Until he was begging Abraham to send Lazarus with a, with a drop of water to cool his tongue. Think of it. What did you do with her fast? But she was too concerned, she was going to eat and drink. She had this little bit of water with me and I was rushing it down. And I have just enough for me and my boy. And I can't give you this, mister. You say, you're dead anyhow. You're, you're, you're ungodly. With that kind of concept. But that's for the Lord. You begged me to kick food. But when she realized this here, the preacher pull out the prayer book and the sharply, she realized that prophet telling her, that's said the Lord. A man, there's an atmosphere around this man. Amen. Something struck that eagle in her there, and she began to discover a potential that she had, that she never knew she had, sitting under the voice of a prophet, just like Abraham, sitting under the voice of that angel there, who back was still the tear of tent. He began to move up into a faith where he began to see and understand that world was going to pass away. This old age was going to pass away. My! Look at Elijah by the brook. God said, you know what we're going to eat and drink. I take care of you. God sent reasons, is that right? God had a brook, is that right? When you feel you got that command of to sustain you. Is that right? He left the world, he was going to eat and drink. What are the four lepers? They still tell us, we are not to eat, we are, we are, we are, we are dying. He said, anyhow, best we get up your belly full. Let we step up by faith. Somehow, God is still God. We might be lepers, people might be scorned away. But them Syrians are there, plenty of them down there. We're going in bowling as brass. And we're going to ask for some food. By the time they get there, God has done run all them people, scare them, and they have so much of riches and food and everything else. Is that right? 
Wait a minute, that time with Elisha. And he said, the man from Baal shall he shall bring 20 loaves. You say, what you fight for? What are you going to eat? Is it, is it yet enough? But you break the bread with faith and you watch and see. Even the, the, the death in the pot. Is that right? Man truly wild God in the pot. I'm trying to show you. He said, take no thought what you shall eat. He does always take care. He, he has all, he give example after example after example. You know, Israel, he said, man, I don't. Is that right? Even the priest in the sanctuary put bread that the man could eat while the minister is inside of here. God is interested. The very thing in Genesis, the first day of all these trees we freely eat. Is that right? And then God put the man by the river. Is that right? So Jesus is saying, we are you taking thought in that for? In other words, if you're conscious of me and who you are and how I have done and you read my word, you need to understand me. You will know food and water. I just take care of that. But the pressure upon people, that boy, they, they, they just can't say, but I have no time for God. Then. You all look at this. I'll get a few material. I'll form up the pages. And they talk that way and they try to show like they're committed to something and God will understand. And, and years pass and they get old and they, they die ungodly. And what went in the, what, what, what went in, go back out in the drought right after and they ride back in the same cycle again. And they labor in for me that perisheth not. For that perisheth. Instead of living for me that perisheth not. See this, these scriptures, he's teaching something. And I'm trying to break it for you so you can see what he's really teaching. So he said, you have the fault of the air wash. They sow not, neither do they reap, no garden band. Yet your heavenly father said to them, Are you not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can I want you with their statue? In other words, he's saying, If I make you four feet five, make yourself six. Make yourself six feet. Go ahead, let me see. Warm yourself to death. I fix, I fix that too. So if you accept that and you're living the way I fix you and I put you there to serve me there is a reason for that. Amen? What is it? Take no thought. The worry, the anxiety, the pressure on the system that has made you a slave to the system. You know why? Check this. This world has an altar. This system has an altar. Jesus said, belong to the devil. Paul said, belong to the devil. Peter said, belong to the devil. John said, belong to the devil. It said, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the power of the will pass away. He offered to Jesus and Jesus said, I don't want it. Is that right? Because he wanted Jesus to bow to him. It don't come with a price. It has come with you being a submission to him. He then Paul said to me, do be entangled in the affairs of his life. Why? You can't live in two worlds at the same time. You have to be a pilgrim in one, and a stranger in one, and a citizen in the next one. You get what I'm saying? Then why are you letting the enemy rob you in the age when the Holy Ghost has come? This is a general now, you know. This is the age where God has come down. God has appeared to a prophet like Enoch. God has appeared to a prophet like Noah. And God has revealed, and God has shown in vision, the world pass away, the atomic bomb obliterate everything, turn it into ashes, debris as far as the eye could see. God show it, and then God come down and show a sign before the change. And then God opened the mysteries and begin to reveal, and then angels appear. And then God begin to open and say, I'll tell you how you're going to get to the next civilization. And God begin to teach through the statue of a perfect man. Things that are to be future home. Join us. God. 
like Noah did. Lord Jesus promised the Son of Man was going to be revealed. If he has come to you, my brother, my sister, if he has come to you and you feel drawn and you feel that like you ain't debris, you ain't going to be some atomic fodder in this age, if he has come to you, it means to say you have potential. It means to say there is transforming power within you that can change you. There is some, that's why God don't waste time on dead. Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. God don't waste time on the dead. He said, my sheep, come out of her, my people. He didn't come to the whole world, he came to Noah. He didn't come to the whole world, he came to Abraham. Is that right? He didn't come to the whole age. He came to William Branham, a prophet from God. That's right. He says, which of you are taking thought? What is the subject? Taking thought, taking thought. It, it's predominant on your mind. It, 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 it is your, the system that you operate, the operating system in you. You can't, you, the devil shut that down for a while. You feel the world will fall apart. Take a little time with God, but, but what are you saying? Take a time for this day, but be too bad, boy. You know, responsibility, I have nothing I have to do. Take time with God. Then somebody says, I, I want to get close to the Lord with you. I want to go, say, but what are you a fanatic or what? But God don't understand. And if you push them outside, because they have no value, it seems like you're going to talk to the air. You got to die with God? That's the first thing to, to do in the place. You want to go in the bush and talk, talk among them trees to who? But in this world, the grip upon your life, the only thing that looks reasonable and sensible is when you do things the world doing. That's why I say oddball. Oddball. You're not conformed to the world. And since the world is in the majority, you're looking odd. And then people start to watch you funny because take it up and one of them fanatic. Then they put cough, cough. And say, ooh, they say, ooh, it's a cultish thing. So Enoch walked with God in that day, it was my whole cultish that was. Man building these big stone things. It was my whole good. This night, man build an ark up there, tell people that come inside there. Woo! The world needs them people, not just educated and like me. It, it was unscientific. Friends, I ain't waiting to stand here so I come in here mark time, you know. I'm trying to show you something of the word of God that will never pass away. I'm trying to break something down here to say, what was... Yes, I, I, I myself used to read that and he's talking about, uh, well, you know, be, where you're worrying yourself for, and, you know, what how deep these things go. He didn't take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink. Nor for your body what you shall put on. Know the people money going full and close? And your money represents what you, the rewards of your labor? And your labor represents your vocation, your ideas in life? What you call successful, important in life, when that translates into wage and money, then you go in now in the grocery and in the store. And you're going to buy the fig leaf that God will provide Adam and Eve. And the wisdom of Eve, you're going to eat for stupid. Things that brought death to the world. Things that brought the Savior. How can you push this without sounding like a fanatic? You, you know me, so you know I'm no fanatic. I'm, 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 I know I'm stressing it hard to make the point clear. And I want you to see too, because you see it so. How much was us put the right value on this message? You know why I said because when you can't have it again here yet? When they were title deed, abstract title deed, and come back and eat the book and second cycle, it just talk. Because that you are son of God and you know it God again. 
Not people want to take, take that and keep it in a church world, in a church life, and anybody step out here to walk in there, watch that fellow, he kind of go up on a limb now. He, 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 he don't play he, God and he. And he don't play out, like he just give me the Bible. What, what kind of strange thing is that? And that's what we want to do with people. Well, the craziest one of all is the Lord Jesus. I hope he understand me how I'm saying that. Because he said, take no thought for where you're going to eat or where you're going to wear. And he said, take no thought for that. That's his words in the Bible. Amen. You can imagine where Caiaphas has them to say when you're teaching that. Now, that is not strange. Hit. You will see just now, in the next couple of minutes, you'll see how deep that goes. Which you right thinking talking about when Kibiti is stuck here? You worry and you fret, you worry and you fret, and you can't change your life. Why take you thought for Raymond? Consider the ways of the people. How they grow, they toil not, neither will they spin. And I shall you that even Solomon in all his glory was never read like one of these. My, it's granted unto her that she should be arrayed. And Eliezer brought raiment, and he had overcome and walked with me in white. And in Mount Transfiguration, his garments is whiter than any fuller soap can wash it. He had a robe of immortality that he passed on into. Because all this kind we labor in for, that can't even go in the resurrection. That is from the sand civilization. You get what I'm saying? They say, well, you live and you, you mean I, I give you seven day years to live on earth. You spend seven day years. What's the whole big world of a clothes? And you ain't getting the Holy Ghost. The first world for the inner man you engage in. And you're feeling good when you're up that world. You have so much in the way. You have more shoes than you need. And your feet even shut for the preparation of the gospel of peace. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Why? Conform to the world. The world's grip, the creeper. But there's a power potential there to change you. Because this world will pass away and there's a life in you that's beyond this world. Yeah. And the Son of Man, when he comes, he was going past the clothes, he was going past the body. What? He was searching for the life. He was trying to find the potential inside of the earth. Listen. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? What God clothing you with? What is he clothing he talking about? What God want to clothe you with? A robe of immortality, friends. You say, no, I don't think he's saying that. Follow me. Let's be done. That's when you get to know the scriptures for yourself. Therefore, take no thought. He still doesn't take no thought. Take in thought. Why take you thought? Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. In other words, that the heathen. The heathen and the ungodly, that is what they run down. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of these things. So God is saying, I know you have need of that. You worry about that. What is your relationship with me? I don't provide. You see, I ain't, I ain't just giving you. I die to give you a good set of clothes, look good in the natural, plus I die to give you a immortal robe. He said, I ain't stopping that dressing the outer man alone. Because Adam and Eve are dressed the outer man. I was so concerned how they dress. He ripped the thing off of Adam and Eve, the fig leaf. When they tried to clothe themselves. Is that right? And then he clothed them with the lambskin. He clothed and take care of the sin. Is that right? They're clothing just like the hide the shame. But his clothing take care of the guilt. My. For your heavenly Father, not your heavenly Father. But seek you for the kingdom of God. For all these things that you're taking thought for, 
the hidden secret. But you seek. All of that from the kingdom of this world. But you seek the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God, Lord? This is the only kingdom we know is the kingdom of God. No, there's a world before this world. And you have to be born by water and spirit to get back in that world. You, you only know this world. You walk after the cause, the prince of the power, the author of this world. His Eden you're living in. Now get this. Because your birth came from the tree of knowledge, not from the tree of life. Our birth came from the tree of knowledge and became subject to the, the tree of knowledge and became brother under the power and the influence of the tree of knowledge because we were born by the birth that he gave them. That's why we have, he has to shed his blood to redeem us out of Satan prison. Because that birth, whosoever you obey, you become the servant. And when Adam and Eve obeyed him, they become his servant. And it takes God to pay a price to get them back out. And everybody they gave birth to was born down in clean condition, trapped in the air, and couldn't come out. Is that right? If you a man be born of water and spirit, he can't see the kingdom, much more into the kingdom. And he's saying now, seek in the kingdom. Now the word they what? Seek and you shall? Seek and you shall find. He's saying, you're seeking after all these things, the Gentiles seek after us. But seek the kingdom. The Gentiles don't know the kingdom. And in my word, I show how the kingdom is going to come. I show the kingdom is going to pass away and usher in the new kingdom. I show it in Genesis. I show the original kingdom. All they didn't even need clothes. All they didn't even need food. I provide food. I provide clothes. I provide for your body. Had no sickness, no nothing. I provide all that in my kingdom. I had you living in my provided way. You're living in my provided way. But then you saw a way that came right unto you. You went after knowledge and now the tree of death. And the day you eat, you died. You lean on your own understanding. But now, let the mind of Christ, he was speaking the mind of Christ. He was putting his thoughts into them. You don't take no thought, you are taught in God, amen. You are the Gentile thought because you're doing what the Gentile's doing. You're doing what the heathen doing. But if you speak a word to them, is that right? And he's going to bring that word back into them. And that word is going to raise them up to a place. Amen. Amen. To be where he was. Because he was in the kingdom. Amen. When he walked on the water, he was in the kingdom. Amen. When he speak to the storm, he was in the kingdom. Amen. When he commanded the devil, he had authority in that kingdom and over this kingdom also. Amen. Glory be to God. But when he went to the funeral and raised the dead back up, he proved what kingdom was the greater kingdom. He said, Lord, that the kingdom of God has come upon you. Amen. And that kingdom was so great, he said, the greatest man born of a woman to announce, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. Is that right? He said, but don't come into observation. Oh my. That kingdom came in this day again, friends. When the Son of Man was revealed, we saw the same thing, the same God do the same thing, even in a greater realm. But seek for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The very robe I'm going to give you, you'll be clothed in my righteousness. And she was granted up to be arrayed in fine linen, which is the righteousness of saints. His own righteousness has been clothed to them. Seek that, be clothed with that. Feed upon the tree of life. And you're going to raise up out into such a realm where Elijah ate one cake and went in the strength for 40 days, where he had famine, where he had a squeeze on the land, and Ahab and Jezebel was in a union. During that time, I cared for the widow, I cared for Elijah, I cared for my own. I was interested in them. When, when, when they were the doctor and hospital bills, I raised the dead back to life. You must have faith because she had experience. She had submitted to the word of the prophet. Is that right? Yeah. Enough, walk with me. He separated from the cosmos. And he was not. Noah, 
he, he was willing to believe me and he separated from the world and refused to be confronted when the thunder struck him. Amen. And when I opened the mystery of the ark, the ring, the dove, that take him into a new world, he was not ashamed of the revelation and he did not walk in it. Amen. And when that world passed away, no other eight person didn't pass away. He passed from one condition to the next. He went above the judgment and came back. Noah and Lot, the two days he spoke of, think of it, these two men saw the world that they were living in pass away. Lot saw his world pass away, and Noah saw his world pass away. Is that right? One saw it pass away water, the other one saw it pass away fire. Oh, my. My! He said, you can't add one cubit to your stature, but you can add faith. You can add virtue to your faith. You can add knowledge to your virtue. You can add temperance. You can add that. But you're going to wrestle up with this outward man. You'll never get to see this fight. You'll remain a Zacchaeus. If you're lucky, you're like Zacchaeus. If you're like Samson, you'll remain like Samson. If it's if it, if it, if it like the sons of Enoch, you will be like them, whatever it is. But the thing is, the inner man, you can grow up into Christ. And you got God put potential inside of you. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. You can grow until you're clothed in a mortal robe. Amen. These are the garments you promised in this age to those who is not conformed to the world. Is that right? My, he says, when the squeeze come, God will multiply the bread and the fish. You don't have to bother with this world. He said, you can put what kind of tax you can do what they want. Amen. The same God will multiply the bread and the fish when that time comes. Glory be to God in the highs. Oh, my. Then where you want to walk, friends, in fanaticism? I say, let's rise up. I say, if, 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 if those things are going to pass away, he said, remember Lot's wife. Look at that woman. Look where she got caught. Did you realize when she get caught? Both receive a change. Sarah struggled to get a hold. You might be, I'm closing. You might be struggling this morning. You might be struggling this morning to get a hold of the world. You might be coming for many years and you can't see the rise up and like you're going good and then you're back down and you're discouraged yourself and disappointed and your will almost gone until you say, Abraham, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't make that no more. You can say where you want. Maybe God called you, but God will call me. Ooh. But God said, what? What do you imagine for myself? Like Job said, it's not like a foolish woman. But it was God, supernatural visitation. God said, never late. I ain't worried. She can say what she wants. It's not even what she said. I don't say she'll be a mother king. I don't say you'll, you, you'll be ready to go. I don't say you are going to make it. I don't care what you think of yourself. I don't care what kind of low self-esteem you have. I don't care what the devil lies to you. I don't care what you listen to the devil. I don't care what the devil mess up your mind. I'm saying this morning, tell the devil, take his hands off of you. Tell him enough is enough, amen. I just turn your back on him and spit on him, amen. Yes, sir. I want you to spit on him, spit on him in the name of Jesus Christ. So you know, amen, that he know you're doing it because you're, he's a deceiver. That's right. My glory. In that hour, Jesus said, when the Son of Man shall be revealed, in that time of the investigation judgment, in that time of the investigation judgment, God, which in mercy, visited Abraham's house. God visit, God jumped down for a visit, and God would have conversation, and God had two things on the mind. First thing he asked, where is Sarah? First question, he jumped out of God's mouth, where is Sarah thy wife? Because Abraham knew you can't go in this alone. She's part of the promise. And God refused to look at all her negative talk, all she unbelief, but all she whimpering and, and, and complaining. God refused to look at that. 
I'm saying this morning, brother, you might have whimper and whimper and whimper. See, it's whimpering this morning. Amen. See, even guys are laughing in God's face. God says, why did you laugh? Say, oh. What was the matter with you? Who laughed? You see me laughing? God say, yes, you laugh. Your heart, you laugh. Yes. Amen. Oh, my. Brother, she begin to realize God didn't want to kill she and all the concepts she have of God, like God is interested and God is suffering and she's trying and God is seeing how hard she's trying and you know some people get vexed with God about kind of nonsense. Why God don't come quicker? Why God don't do that? And hey, if we have come calling me Sarah, that's not the name of me, Sarah, you hear that? You say you can say what you want, you know me, Sarah. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, sir. My, my, my. I'm gonna, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep putting the H in you until I see the H in you. <laughs> until I see the H branded in you. Amen. Glory be to God in the high. Amen. Oh my. Abraham called call by a new name and she didn't maybe couldn't understand God to hear the again. God said, talk to you and tell you that and you're trying to apply that to me too. He said, we connected together, aren't we? Aren't we? We connected together. So I don't care about you. Well, you, you can't do it, you can't do it, you can't do it. My God is able to supply all your need according to his riches and glory. Oh my. Amen. If you're interested in dollars and cents, my God say, but I get gold tried in the fire, that you're really going to be rich. Amen, you're really going to be rich. With gold tried in the fire, you're really going to be clothed. Not that old dress you buy there for a few dollars and cents with a high heel shoot a match and go and get a hairstyle and go down and buy that poke. Not that. Amen. Let, let me squeeze the rose of Sharon upon you. Amen. Let me put some fragrance. Let me put some opium from the little valley inside of you. Yes. Then you ain't complaining and bawling and crying no more. You have peace and quiet tranquility. You have no idea of the shall that God can smell you. God can smell you. Amen. Say, there comes my priest. Amen. Coming to offer spiritual sacrifices. Here they are robed in garments of glory that I ordained how it should be made by special hands and wash them and robe them in it to come in my presence. Oh my, my, and all of that mistress lot, brother, she was stepping up in things and she was, you know, becoming prominent and she, she polished up herself with some more science from down in Sodom and now she was like, Woo! Up and above. Oh my. And little old Sarah again all. And then she said, um, Lot, honey, I know you was right that day when you woke up from here. You use your own man. <laughs> See, I like to say it's time to. Abraham, you're not the only man around here. He said, Yeah, but Sarah, <laughs> Sarah don't do Abraham what you do me. <laughs> Oh, my, 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 my. But as Sarah unbelief, watch this. Sarah unbelief, she could have died. But Abraham faith, Abraham union with God. Amen. God can touch her, yellow country, Abraham can touch her. But God never left her. God could go through a lot any time and turn she that pillar of shock. Do you hear that? God can go through luck any time and throw she the pillar of salt. But where Abraham was, God can touch you, amen. Glory be to God in the highest. You know why? They had the tenders. They had the tenders. The angels come to them. Mm. Yes, sir. They elected and call out. They come to walk out blood and spirit and get a new name. Hallelujah. They come out of Babylon, amen. And they come all the way through. And God tell a king and a kingdom, you are dead man if you touch that woman, amen. She's a special woman, amen. Hallelujah. Oh, my, thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. I tell you, husband and wife, 
Protestant congregation, everything is the same. But the mystery of God is that word, that atonement, that revelation of Jesus Christ that stands between you and God, friends. That is the holy ground that meet you on. So, my! She thought she could have got this. What is the matter with you, girl? You don't you know you are transforming power inside of you? You let this cosmos deform you? You crazy? Is there anything too hard for me? And she threw her hand and said, Thank you, Lord. And she judged him faithful. And she judged him faithful. And she judged him faithful. Say, Oh God, I was a foolish woman. Oh God, how can I treat you like that? Oh God, I thank you that you look beyond my fault and you see me need. Oh my, she judged him faithful. And she received dunamis. And she had conception. And God changed her, amen. She went to a metamorphosis. And that little caterpillar Sarah, God gives you a little sprightly butterfly. When a people like see that nice butterfly, so he comes with a big net. He got a big net and generally bottle of put she already. And bottle there and had she in the bottle there. Amen. Thinking you're putting in the, in, the, in the butterfly collection. God dropped down that night. Amen. He said, by morning you're a dead man. You don't know what to put your hand on there, boy. My, 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 my. My! When she thought she didn't have it, she had it. Have you thought, ever thought you didn't have it? Yeah. And then you're going to find it after you've gotten great and you have it? Yeah. Can you catch this morning and say you have it? Yeah. That little lily in the muck and the mire. Look where it's coming from, oh my God. But the sun is risen. That's the key. The sun is risen. It's a new day. It's the Easter seal. It's the rising of the sun. What a resurrection that was. Then anything that belongs to that sun and connects to that sun and lives by the light of that sun and that sunlight can go to the darkest of regions and find that dung in that dark cosmos among all the eel and lizard and spiders and they come out of her, my little lily, press my little lily. Amen. Come out of Babylon and come back to Jerusalem. Amen. Come back in my presence. Hallelujah. Oh, I thank God for grace, don't you, this morning? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Discover this morning that potential is, 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 is within you. Isn't that what you cannot think here? Isn't that your mind that's the battleground? Take no thought, take no thought. Cast on reasoning, cast on imagination. Every day that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. Bring every thought into captivity and in this age of the mind. Let the mind of the age, the intelligence, the great secret in the back part of God's mind, let it put into your heart. Let the headstone come down. Let them some voices, amen, thunder into your heart and call you by the name and say, you are my elect. I call you according to my purpose. Oh, man. You say, remember, look why she had a body change. Oh, my, she reflect in Sodom. And hear angels bring them out hurriedly. They come quickly. Escape. Go quick. Let me show you when you stay in a place too long. When you stay in a place that you're not supposed to stay in too long. And you're in that place today, run. Run for your life. The angels are saying, Escape. Come quickly. Why? The thunders have been revealed. The angels have appeared. The supreme judge of all the earth has come down. The ministry of intercession is going forth in Abraham. Amen! Glory be to God in the heart. My, think of it, friends. And the world is fixing to pass away. And they are getting ready to move into a change. Is that not the hour? Is, that, is this not the day? Is that not the time in the days of Noah? Did Noah catch a mystery? Did Noah catch a mystery? Was that how it started? A mystery open, a announcement in the middle of the heaven, a seal open, a mystery unfold, and eagles on the earth. Where the carcasses, they had to gather up all those who were going out, had to be around the eagle. Is that right? You hear me? 
No, I'm Enoch was eagle. Friend, you step in front of the seven trumpets. Amen. Hey, I put him on the eagle. He's got right. Had to be around the eagle. The eagle is where the prophetic vision, where the prophetic revelation is, where the what pass an unknown language, what don't come to everyone, what the hidden manna, the rock beneath the rock. That might be Jesus and his program. Is this the program for the hour? Is this God's program? Is this the end time program? Isn't this might not be a church program, but it's God's program written out in the Bible. Take no talk. What kind of robe are you looking for this morning? What kind of food are you looking for this morning? What kind of transportation are you looking for this morning? If you're conformed to this cosmos, you're looking for a next motor car. You're not looking for that final frontier transportation. You're looking for a next new fashion coming from Paris and Los Angeles and New York and London. You're not, you're not looking, going for that robe of immortality. Amen. The Father's house. That's a mansion he's built for you. A building made without hands eternal in the heavens. You're not looking for the white garments he promised. Oh my. But the thief will thief those garments. The thief who comes to steal will steal those garments. And your niggas and shame will appear. And here's a woman, and get this. Remember Lot's wife and, and Sarah, Abraham's wife. Let's remember these two. Two women, two churches. Two women's spirit in the day when the angels came. When the mystery of the thunders of the voices. When the supreme judge appeared, when the investigation judgment was going forth, when a ministry of standing in the gap intercession was taking place, when the sodomites was on a rampage, and they see new flesh, and they want new flesh, and they tried to box to the door, and where a gospel was blinding them from the door, the church in Sodom. Is that right? Then if we are in that age, there were two women had a body change. This is the generation of body change. Everybody will have a body change in this generation. The righteous will walk up in the ashes of the wicked. Right now they're walking in high heels to make the ashes when that time comes. He'll leave neither root nor branch. That day will burn us as an orphan. Is that right? That atomic explosion will throw the world that nuclear winter, the sun won't shine for five months. Is what the Bible says? But a radiation will eat their eyes out and their tongue out, they gnaw the tongues of pain, the Bible says, the prophet atomic power and the bum hits. Think of it. Meteorites will hit the earth. Stars will fall from heaven. So it's the convulsion. When does it come? Under that third wall. But between the second wall and the third wall, the supreme judge descends. Seven thunders come, the angels appear. What for? The one shall be taken and the other shall remain. Oh my, the catching away, friend. Stealing away. Why? The world is fixing to pass away and the elect is fixing to be changed. What shook the earth? What brought the rain? They didn't, they said there no water up yet. God had it with the scientific instruments confined it. Every time the probe comes through, God moves the water. Probe will say, Move the water this way. You say, I'm nothing there. But you know what? You know what? Depend on when the explosion went off, it threw the earth off its axis. That's why some days, 28 days, some is 29, some months is 30 days, some months is 31 days. God don't have to be upside it so far. It was 30 days always in God's time in the Bible. But you know what happened? It threw the earth off its orbit, off its axis, and it gets away from the sun. Everything dies when you get away from the sun. That way, in a big winter, you get away from the sun. And winter, everything dies. It gets cold, and that, it kills everything. It kills all the life. But when it comes back around to the sun, it brings spring and resurrection. The spring comes back up. What brings spring, friends? And when you who get away from God begin to line up with the Son of Man again, they begin to line up with the Word again. Watch the life of God. Amen. The things that the winter kill, 
Because when that sun comes in the springtime, it comes as an enforcer. No matter how much snow, no matter how much air, but it begins to force that seed to come back up. It begins to melt away every condition from around you and turn the very condition to be a blessing to you, to give you what you need out there, to raise you back up where you ought to be. It enforces a rightful condition of restoration for the thing that went away. That's right. If your health have gone away, it's coming back. Amen! But if the fire of God in your life have gone away, it's coming back. You get lukewarm and cold, it ain't come back this morning. Line up for the wood again. Oh, my little girl, stand to your feet this morning here. Hallelujah! Think about it, friends. This is the hour. This is the time. All those things. Remember, Sarah. You might be Sarah here or lot wife this morning. It's either the two friends. Which body change you want? Choose your body change. When God came, 28 days before the conception, 28 days before Dunamis, 24 years she traveled and no Dunamis, no revelation, no power in the light. 28 days before. You talk about faithful. You talk about faithful. But he didn't come and meet a woman praying. He can meet a woman laughing at the word. Is that right? He's coming in an investigation, judgment, and meet a woman laughing at the promise that she's part of. Meet a woman, but I say, I try everything already. Like this is for me. I know child of God. You know what? That's the devil talking. But Elohim come with a gooseneck hoe. Walk in the cornfield. Had a bunch of weeds down in Sodom. And Lot, a grain of corn, was being choked by the tears and the thorns and thistles. What did he say? The cares of this life choke the seed. And then up on the mountain, outside of Sodom, he knew that potential for the change there. He seek the elected ones first. He seek the ones who are going to be quickened by the thunder. Their seed was waiting for the right type of water. He know what to open to Abraham and what to open for Lot and them. Is that right? He stay back fellowship with Abraham. Is that right? When he left, Lot was salvation was secure. Is that right? Lot salvation was secure. Man. Oh my. I feel good this morning. Discovering. Let me tell you something, friends. It'll take the rapture. The rapture is the escape out of the civilization. Radiation. Look what happened to the science civilization. Insane age. It'll take the rapture. That's what the whole mess is all about. The angels of God has come. The angels of God has come. Seven mysteries open, and all that we have need of the food we're going to eat, the raiment we're going to wear, the kingdom, the righteousness, the birds and the lilies, creatures in this economy, were just shadows. We're going that civilization. When God made man, the capstone that creation. He was the tree, he was the flower, he was the rock, he was the eagle, he was the lamb, he was the lion. His face was the hyssop, the river was inside of him, of living water. Everything in the creation reflected in Adam, because Adam was a figure of him who was to come. The one who created the creation and expressed himself in his creation. That's when he came to the Lord, the sons of the prophets, all things concerned himself. And his bride, his 
part of him. And she must take all things concerning herself. If you are the word, she's part of the word. Sarah was part of Abraham. The unconscious part of Abraham. Would you walk away today? And you have this opportunity? You don't have the opportunity to really open the word to you. You know that? Because he is the door and the word is the door. Nobody can get justified until Luther opened that. And then people get to come in. You do penance the rest of your life, hoping God accept that. Let a man catch that and come and sort of speak just to give it to you. And that word anointed of God and the Spirit of God to give that man that word come to you and quick and you see the door open, you begin to come before you. Wait to behold, I said before I open the door, wait was was word in a man's mouth. Is that right? The wise boy just got through that door. Is that right? He opens that every time. Lot wife, she couldn't see life beyond her world. She was a vulture. She was a vulture. She couldn't fly above fashion. She couldn't fly above popularity. She couldn't fly above outward beauty. So when that world passed away, she passed away. And the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were here. All the max factor. And they took unto them wives as many as they chose. And when that world passed away, all them fear daughters passed away. When the Eden beauty passed away, Adam and Eve lost the glory to that passed away too. Is that right? Is that different Adam? Nobody sweat a brow. You had the time. He was living in God provided way. But he tried to live in a way that was not God provided way. Trying to achieve for himself by might or by power. It's not him that will it, him that run it. It's not him that will it or him that run it. It's not by might or by power. It is by my spirit, saith the Lord. It comes by God's grace. God rich in mercy. When that door is open, Abraham and Sarah can do nothing to get changed. But the God who called him out, the God who was, was faithful to his promise, Abraham believed he was faithful. Abraham believed he was able to perform what he had spoken. And then Sarah had to judge him that he was faithful and confess that she was faithful. God put himself before her for judgment. Judge me, Sarah. Judge me. You judge this world, friend. The Spirit of God search at the things of God. You have the Spirit of God in your life? Tell me if this, if this world is of man or is of God. Tell me if you hear part wood and part man and part denomination mixed up here this morning. Or tell me if you hear the word of God from the Bible. From the message. Then, if you judge that it's faithful and it said what the word said, then isn't that God putting his hand towards you? Isn't that God opening a door for you when the come out? I started telling you about the, the log that falls on the corn. The power and the influence of the creeper that wraps around you, that restricts you and paralyzes you from coming to your full potential and growing in the straight road you are ordained to grow in. I show you Sarah was in the same condition all the years. The creeper grows to get so strong. And when God came to she said, can't be done. And God looked at the eye and said, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Would you receive that this morning? I want you to believe him. There is some of you here. This is psychology now. This is true. If, if I don't know that as a shepherd, 
de l'autre partie qui est là. Donc, il s'est fait des chiffres de l'âme, et 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 il s'est fait des mean to see what is among them, in them, influence them, and what kind of help they need. And he know when it needs the four honey in the limestone, he know when it takes the slingshot and hit it in the nose, so they don't go near the poison water, because though you can feel a wolf coming and, and, and feel nervous, it can't detect poison water. And then somebody had to break your foot or something to keep them close to him, to get healed, so they won't destroy it. But I'm saying this morning, I take this in a roundabout way to come to show you, take no thought. Take no thought. The Gentiles seek that, but seek the kingdom. These last two messages here, he opened the kingdom to you. A faith civilization. And how you're coming to it. And in the air, you're coming back to live in God's provided way. And you don't have to try to achieve not for yourself. Everything is achieved. In Christ. They tried to make fig leaf. It was in the strange land. They tried to get worship. They had run into Billy Altar. They worship and the acceptance was in the land too. Did the Bible say, Bless the Lord, speak of blessing everybody in Christ Jesus? And how he was scared of his own son. How shall he not freely give us all things? A double L, all. And A double L, spiritual blessings. Where? In Christ. Don't fight the fish for Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word. It's preached to you, and don't let the devil rub you now. It's preached to you to give you the faith. And you can see that that's God's will, that's God's plan. And God, in my condition, even show me Sarah in the Bible, when I condemn myself, and God is saying, you come and receive that. You judge them faithful, and they do not miss that it's going to take to conceive this seed that's going to bring the promise, going to bring you change. God is going to give that. Can you believe that? Have we not received a message that come to Abraham? Is not this the son of man message? Then the altar is open here. Let us sing. I want to see deliverance. You are going to, you are reflecting your world today. If that is the true world, you'll be changed and going to glory. You'll abide forever. If that is not the true world, and you're reflecting this cosmos, and you're being conformed to this cosmos, friend. Know that this cosmos will pass away. I'm saying, young people, elderly ones, wherever you are, whatever age you are, God wants to give you this help now. I don't know about after service. I don't know about next week. I know now. I know now. God will not turn back a sincere person. God will not turn back a hungry person. And I know the time to move is when the word speaks to you. He is saying, come quickly. The angels were trying to hustle them out. And she was coming and looking back with desire into a world that already judged. Do not look back with desire. Jesus said, remember Lot why? She didn't make it right. She loved the cosmos. She reflected the cosmos. She couldn't give up the cosmos. She felt that was the life for her. She passed away the world. Sarah couldn't come into the blessing. She couldn't walk where everyone was walking. But you know something? God came with her in his mind. And when God comes, the question God asks, God said, where is? Sarah. He's asking for you this morning. He's asking for you this morning. 
the things in the world, the cosmos I'm talking about, that want to squeeze you into its image. God can break that off you this morning. You can go back home, release from that guilt and condemn. He said, I will sprinkle clean water upon you. I'll cleanse you from your filthiness and all your idols. I'll give you a new heart. I'll give you a new spirit. And I'll put my spirit inside of you. He didn't say you have to fight up the gas. He said, he'll give that to you. But the thing is, you move when God is moving and you get left behind for him. You come when God calls, not when you want to come. You don't negotiate with God first. You receive it. I am just saying what I know as scripture. I can't do nothing. I'm saying that on the basis I preach the word. I'm saying that on the basis that God is faithful. I'm saying that on the basis that we are the very match in peace to that type because that's this day that Jesus said when Jesus did come. And that was this message. As far as I know, this message was the revealing of the Son of Man. This message was a prophetic message to take our people out of this civilization back to the faith civilization. And all those who are going to go in that new civilization have to walk in this truth. And on the basis of that this morning, as a, a shepherd here preaching that to a flock here who believe me to be the pastor and who come and to walk in this world believe I'm saying what that prophet said. I'm saying I try to be faithful to that. And on the basis of that, what God has vindicated, none of you who desire that deliverance and is willing to meet God and lay down and separate and walk away and take no thought for the things that you, you put too much value and too much emphasis on. God wants to, he says, seek for you. He says, does not your heavenly father know? It just shows that your relationship with God is wrong and you have a wrong concept of God if you feel that God is not faithful to meet all those needs. He said, God knows. My God shall supply all your needs. Cast your care upon him, for he careth for you. Just as I say to you, you say it back to the Lord. And say, Lord, that's your word. And I'm standing right here today, Father. I, 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 I'm taking you. You put a servant to speak your word to us. He's spoken it. And I'm receiving that by the grace of God. And I appreciate the stand that some of you have taken to be here. And I want this church to do something with me because we have so much of people here all along the aisles and on the side here. But our God is a God who is gracious. And he can touch it. Let's just see some touching Jesus is all that matters. That, that, that's what matters right now. And your life will never be the same. There is only one way to touch him. Just believe as you call on his name. Touching Jesus. Everyone in worship now, all around the building, the one man I want to call. Let this faith rise now. Let this expectation just unite. And my life will never be the same. There is only one way. There is only one way to turn. And that's what we are doing right now. Just believe. Just believe. Only believe. Just believe. When you call on his name. All oh, with your hands and worship him. Don't just get in his presence. Break from your right now. We see every doubt, every thought, every negative thing. Change Jesus. You worship him, the Father, I believe in you. I receive, I receive, Lord. I accept it. 
I'm meeting you. I believe I have that potential. Jacob thought he didn't have it. He was trying to hide, put his wife and his children in front of Esau. He was selling peace offerings, but he had the potential. Abraham was running in fear down in Egypt, but he had the potential. As he began to discover it, he chased five kings. He brought Lot back. Think of it. You have that potential within you. sins, confess them before God, amen. If you confess your sin, he's just unfaithful to forgive you. If you're willing to walk in the light, as he's in the light, the blood of his son cleanses you from all sin. Lay aside that sin, friend. Every way that evil beset you, and run. Keep your eyes fixed on the prize. Look unto Jesus, the author and finish of his faith, your faith today. Reach out and touch. Reach out. Touch the Lord. Touch this pillar of fire, this mighty angel of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I'll never leave you, never take you. Who's here, among us? And, oh, thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit. How for the end, dear God. Look down in this audience and see those believing hearts. See the willingness that Samson had when he stood there that day between them pillars in dead earnest. Didn't make a long prayer, but he was in dead earnest. He came straight to the point. He was willing to pay the price. He knew what it was going to cost him to see the power of God come back in his life. Oh, God, as you see that willingness today, Father, as you see sons of God, daughters of God, who have wrestled with things in their lives, this evil cosmos, the prince of the power of the air, this adversary like, who's like a roaring lion trying to devour him, who has tormented them and tested them and battle them, oh God. But today, Father, your great grace has come down towards them. God, in simplicity, you came. Lord, I wrestled yesterday, dear God, and you took me aside as it were to see that there were many needy ones here because you wanted to do something for them today. God, not knowing, I just spoke it out this morning. Oh, God, trying to be honest, not knowing what you're going to do and how you're going to move. But as a shepherd for the sheep, oh, God, and seeing the time that we are living in, seeing so many, oh, God, being battled, being tested, the enemy coming from all sides and deceit. Oh, God, some wounded. The wild dogs got them, and now he's on the blood trail, and they're losing blood. If they don't get to the water brook, oh God, Father, he'll get them. And as their heart panted, losing blood, it's life ebbing out quickly. And in desperation, it's trying to find that water brook. So, dear God, today you open up the word. They've seen the water brook, oh God, and they come, Father, right to the fountain, oh God, right to the water brook, oh God, where you, Father, can revive them, oh God, where you can bring you strength to them, dear God, where they can rise up, Lord. Oh, 
of God where deliverance can take place today. Young men and young women, Father, whom you have called, but oh God, down through this walk, they've encountered places. Lord, they made the wrong decisions. They stay and think too long. The enemy, oh God, Father, set snares and pitfalls for them. And yet, God, we see some, Father, oh God, hanging on by a thread, as it were, hanging over hell. But Lord, your God, which in mercy, you can fly faster than they can fall. And you've come to the rescue today, Father. Oh God, the eagle teareth her young on her wings. So dear God, you, the great Jehovah Eagle, has come them today to bear these up, dear God. You see the nutter that coming, oh God, and you want to take them to the top of the mountain, far away from the influence, far away from the evil. And I pray that right now that your great Holy Spirit will overshadow them, dear God. Lord, your great presence will engulf them right now. And as they stand praying, you said when you stand praying, and here they are standing praying, lifting holy hands unto the Lord. Oh God, just like it says in the Bible, Almighty God, like you told in Luke 18, smiting the press. And say, Lord, when you look upon me, let it be as when you look on the mercy seat. You say, that man went back justified. Oh, God, he prayed right. He wasn't like the next man who was praying how good he was and what he was. But the man cried, Lord, be merciful. Oh, God, Father, I pray today in the name of Jesus Christ. A sincere prayer would come before you through the blood from aching hearts from wounded spirits, oh God. Lord, cry now, knowing you are the giver of every good and perfect gift, and that you are in speaking distance and hearing distance. And today they look, Lord, for restoration. They look for deliverance. They look for strength, oh God. They look for the refreshing that they need, oh God. They look for that new burst of faith, oh God. They look, oh God, Father, for that victory. They look for that revelation that will answer the soul. They will calm the spirit, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. As your servant, I take authority over every spirit, over every devil that have hindered the elders, oh God, stand at my side today. Lord God, when we stand here, watching over this flock, oh God, that you have put among us to care for. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we come united. He said, if two shall agree, as upon touching, anything it shall be done. He said, deliver the sheep, oh God. This is your commission. Strike that serpent and bite it into them. You told me years ago. And now in the name of Jesus Christ, say that I command you to turn these loose that believe me to be a pastor, to be a shepherd your place among them, to watch over them in the name of Jesus Christ. Turn them loose, devil. We the church of the living God a journey by the blood of Jesus Christ. And almighty God, you the great shepherd of the sheep, who to the blood of the everlasting covenant, oh God, who paid the price to redeem every one of these that was in the Lamb's book of life. I pray, oh God, the Lord God, you'll send on the blessing into their hearts today. You'll raise them up where they ought to be, oh God. You'll give them the strength that they need, like you took that sheep on your shoulders, and you say, come and rejoice with me, oh God. So dear God today, may Lord God, they feel the peace and the security Oh, God, of your great loving arms around them, oh, God, bringing them back home, bringing them back to the fold, bringing them back to the world. They will be drifted in life. Get out of line. Oh, God, get under the influence today, Father. May, oh, God, they get back in the rhythm of the gospel. Granted, Lord, we claim them, everyone, every brother, every sister, for the glory of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let you not be one, Father. Let you not be one. They stand in here in need. 
that will not find that you are the giver of every good and perfect gift. You are faithful to promise. Oh God. May the be who have sinned be forgiven of their sins. May the bleach of your blood wash them white than the snow. May they have restitutions to make and the devil is fighting them. May you give them grace and humility and power to make these things right. And may their God, Father, hears and doubts whether they're going to hold out. May you set them upon a rock that they shall not be moved. May they be a head from the above them, O oh God. Hallelujah. And may the God of all grace, O oh God, the God of peace, who will bruise Satan under our feet, trample upon every devil, O oh God, that have tried to rub them from that blessing that you have given. Let them grow in a straight road. And this great potential that Elijah found, Father, when he ate that cake, when he thought he, he, had, he, he was going to die and Jezebel was going to get him and he couldn't go on. And he became a neurotic. But a few days after he smoked that Jordan, he crossed over for his rendezvous with them angels. And that fiery chariot picked him up because he knew, oh God, that there was potential inside of him. Oh my God. Just like Enoch knew, Father, when that revelation burst forth upon his soul, they discovered it, Lord. It's our time now. We are discovering it, Lord. That's what makes us different. It's that gene, that little seed of eternal life, that very thought of God, that attribute might be like a little pinhead, but the potential for a man six feet four inches, 275 pounds, oh God. So it is, Father, that little seed, I like a little green of mustard seed, but there's faith and power against him. Say, if you say to this mountain, be thou removed and no doubt, it will do it. We thank you, Lord. That little acorn. Big solid oak tree. All that transforming power is inside. Let them not doubt that. Let them go to exercise in the faith, in that which is locked up in them. And Lord, not just for these here, but even for the unseen ones at this time, out in the region who sit around these tapes, that their God too, when that time would come and they would sit around this, this very presence and this very cry in the heart of your servant and this very need in the lives of your children that we met, the Lord Jesus, you would do it for them, Father. That they will catch that hope. They will have that expectation. And they will walk into these realities. Granted, we ask today. We we'll love you. We give you glory. We give you thanks. We receive, oh God. We receive it, Lord. We receive it, Lord. We receive it, Lord. We receive it. Full press doesn't run it over. Our God supplied all our needs according to his riches and glory we confess it lord we shall never be ashamed in the name of jesus christ amen amen god bless you go back to your sheet fully persuaded thoroughly convinced the absolute of his word. Let that faith be zero to that North Star. Let the compass of his Holy Spirit keep your life centered that you will live by his word. Let us worship in his little song.
Oh, to God's unchanging heart. Fill with your hopes and things eternal. Oh, to God's unchanging heart. Let's just sing that song. Time is filled with still Francisco. God be behind the seat. Not no a moon can stand. Oh, to God's unchanging heart. Glorify God above. That's what I love God's little children for. Amen. God bless you all, saints. I'm not a very brave person, so I might stumble, fumble a little bit. Like, excuse me for that. This morning, when I was coming up to service from Princess Town Travel in the bus, I sat down and I was talking to the Lord. Right? And I seen told them, I seen all the condition in my life. And the devil was praying so that I am not a daughter, I am not his. And that's always in my mind, right? And he keeps showing me all my condition, like as a wife. Look how I just treat my husband, how I talk to him. I'm not supposed to be like that. If I, I'm supposed to treat my husband like how I treat him, Lord. So how can I be a daughter if I'm doing them kind of things? So then I said, Lord, you know where I'm falling short. And I want you to prove to me that I am your daughter. And I said, all these songs that we sang here this morning, I keep singing that coming up, and I'm praising the Lord. And I said, Lord, if you just show me that, I come in. I said, for I've been called for out of call, I'm going up. He did that. I came up. I said, okay. I said, okay, Lord, that be it. I come in, and I'll give a little testimony to show that I know that you are faithful, and I am your daughter. And I'd just like to give God thanks and praise to give him a lot. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That's the way you come in the house with expectation. Come worshiping God when you're coming in the bus, when you're driving your car. That's where they come. Don't wait to come to church. Come and find everything confirmed. Every song you sing, everything you pray, everything you heard in the Word, everything that happened in the service. Amen. It just shows God is interested to remove fears and doubts and uncertainty. That Satan don't try to bring upon the mind and destabilize your faith. And God don't try to anchor your soul and set you on the rock. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. But Michael Fortune like to thank the Lord for healing of his back pains after prayer was offered for him also. He and our sister, both of them came back well by the grace of God. We thank God for that. Amen. This testimony time. Amen. This victory time. Glory be to God. 
Yes, sir. Hallelujah. God bless you, Zane. Sometime during this week, it was either Monday or Tuesday. Well, I had an operation for my nose. I have been going through a lot of dark times you know, in this season. But God promised that he'd bring me through by his grace. And um, sometime during this week, I don't remember to I pick up this book, I Know My Redeemer Liveth. Because I know that God promised me that he will heal me completely. I took up the book and I began to read about Job and about, about David. That Job, when he saw Easter, what it meant to him, it wasn't when he was having a good time and everything was good for him. It's when he was in his last moments, like dying moments. He saw Easter. And I called my son Isaiah, and, I, and Samuel was there. And I decided to tell them about, read about Job and David. And it's in your trying times, then you, see, you can see Easter. And I'm saying to them, I'm seeing Easter because I'm looking for a certain deliverance from God in my body in my flesh and I'm saying to them that I see it still like Job you know I said there'll be another spring for me I spoke I spoke that to Hallelujah. them I told them I said this is how the tree winter I said winter is now for me but as a tree the sap going down to the roots I said there'll be another spring Isaiah for your mother so tonight this morning I praise God you know that God just came he always does the same to me I don't know I feel special I don't know about you you have to know but I feel special before God. Hallelujah. Because you always got a thing. There'll be another spring for me, saints. I may not be able to walk right now too good. I have a problem. But God has shown me total deliverance. And there'll be another spring. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yes, I'm a very shy person, but I just thank God for all that he has done for me. In many ways, how much that he deals with me, and I was I feel him plenty. But seeing that this morning, because of his grace and his love, you know, inside my heart, you know, I'm striving for that faith. And precious things that pray and think for me. I can thank God that he's faithful, who promised his son. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. understand this, eh? See, sometimes they need to say that, you know. For some people, that they are, when they woke up and they do that, there's a certain thing that happens inside in their mind where they cross over and Satan is going to make them a foot rag no more. So that, that'll be important to them by the grace of God. And you pray and, you, you know, give them the support in times like these. Because remember, a, 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 a chain is strong as biggest link. Sometimes they get a, a certain touch in the service there, and they just want to say, I just come back and say, I just want to say, thank you, Lord. That's, the leper came back and said, I just want to say, thank you, Lord. And, and that was it. But it's written in the world. Good morning. I just want to say glory unto God. Amen. You know, I have been through so many things. I've experienced, I've seen God work, and I've fight him on many occasions. And just yesterday, I called my brother, Colin. I started giving God back what he has given to me. I started giving him my tithe. And I had a little experience, and I had to share it with Colin. And then this morning, when I got up, I said, you know what? I'm going to the house of the Lord. Because every time he reveals himself to me, I run, I run, and he keeps calling me. And this morning, when I got up, and I decided to prepare my lunch for my family. I said, Lord, nothing is holding me back since after last week Sunday, that message that was preached. I said, I'm holding on. I'm going with that faith. I started to yearn during the week. I needed to know more. I called Colin. I said, Colin, I need to know more. I want to know what to, where to look, what to do, how to deal with things. And he said, you need to start coming to service more. I said, Lord, on a Monday and Wednesday, I want to be... Wednesday and Friday, I want to be here, but how am I going to do that? And he said, don't worry, everything will be all right. 
And this morning when I got up, I left my husband lying in his in bed and I went out. And when I came back into the room to get ready, he took all his clothes out and he started packing. And I said, where are you going? He said, I don't know. And that vine that has been holding on to me and crushing me and deforming me and bending me, I know I'm like Sarah. I'm standing there believing because God went through Abraham to get to Sarah. And he's going to go through me to get to my husband and my family. And no matter what, I'm going to keep coming. And I'm going to keep praising him. And he's going to work things out for me. And I just want to say, thank you, God, for your servant, Brother Vin. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says, let the daughters of Zion rejoice, eh? Let them lift their voices and in praise and adoration is good. When the spiritual liberty, so many people come in church for years and wouldn't get and give God praise and get a testimony. Thank God this morning. Amen. Sometimes you feel it, it's not the day, it's the day. This is the day. That the Lord has made, we will be glad and rejoice in it. Amen. What us? Morning, saints. Well, in recent times, I just feel, you know, like I'm not moving on. I'm just in one place. And I keep asking the Lord, Lord, show me the way, Lord. Draw me to you, Lord. You know, because a young person growing up, I never really knew the Lord, and then I came here, and then I saw, yes, yes, you are here, Lord. And when I got baptized, I said, I don't want to stay here, Lord, because there's more, you know? You don't just stay at baptism, you have to move on. You have to know that the Lord is in you. And I was getting depressed, saying, Lord, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing that, you know, any progress. Help me, Lord, show me the way, you know? I I would come to service and get rejuvenized and then during the, during the week if I don't come to service I feel like the world bringing me down and I say Lord I need to start more fellowshipping more so I started coming during the week you know and then this morning when I was going to come I got ready my husband he took my mother to go and get something and he came back 10 to 11 and I say Lord I, I, I wasn't going and my husband asked me, say, you're not going? I said, no, look at the time. So then I wrote on the paper, I said, Lord, you lead me. I wrote on a yes or no. I said, if it's yes, I'm going. So as I opened the paper, it was yes. And I just put on my clothes and I said, I'm going. And then I came, you know, God talking to me right through the service. And I just said, yes, Lord. I went, Brother Vince said, come for the altar call. I said, I'm going up. And then when I hear the people coming to you know, testify that God is good. I say, yes, I have to go, to go up and testify because he is good, you know. He is great. He is wonderful. Hallelujah. He is Hallelujah. Lord. I just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For being so good to me, you know. And I just pray that Lord, he will, and I believe that he will draw my husband too, Lord. And I just thank him now. Just thank him for all the goodness he has given me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Isn't that wonderful to see wives believing for the husband? My, that, that, that's great by the grace of God. Amen? Where the deacons around here? God bless you, saints. I just come to give a little testimony. What happened all the years I spent in Guinea, that things are hard. I just want to bring back this to come, you know. That sometimes, like last week, I was talking to Judy. But I didn't tell she really the whole scenario about the thing. So uh, we was reading the voice of the sign. And while reading it, I see where Jesus from the foundation of the world, his 12 um, disciples, he did choose them and things. So I tell him, she, I go to you and I tell him, she, I said, Judy, look what I read. And you know, she listened. So I say, but you know, Judas didn't. God did choose Judas, but all he knew was the devil. She says, she says, so what do you mean? She said, you want to say he's the devil? I say, no, girl. But the whole time, the devil just keep telling me, you is not a child. But every time I think about it, God carry me back to Grenada and show me all what he do for me in Grenada. 
you know, and this morning, I just want to thank God that God could come this morning and open my eyes clear to see that I am Sarah. You know, standing there all the time, you know, and just praying for my husband, for my children, and all these, all these, you know, loved ones in and out of the country and things. And I really thank God for the service this morning because this is a scripture God gave me some years ago. And I keep finding out about it, keep reading it and applying it to my life. And this morning, God could make it real to me. So I really thank God for it and I thank God for the minister. Some leader that if, if some of you all don't know. Yes. Hello, friends and brethren. Thank God for this privilege He has given to me to be alive, that I can stand on that form here to testify the loving kindness of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I can afford to tell you I have passed through a lot of trials, especially a few weeks back to now. The devil had been testing my faith all along the lines. I couldn't see my way. I lying on my bed in the night, pushing me off of my bed by my wife, which I right. explained to me to the deacon uh, and so on, and they all came and they helped me and so on. And I continue in prayer. In this air that could, I couldn't, I couldn't hear in this air at all. I walk in when people talking to me, I say, eh, 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 eh. I got confused, but I thank God, shalom. I thank God for this gift he has given to me that I can come in his presence this afternoon. The, the air, my air is clean and clear. I can Hallelujah. hear. I can hear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I, I thank God for this privilege. This I say, thank you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, sir. I just want to give God all the praise and honor and glory this afternoon. Knowing Lord Father, because of all that I have been going through, I see where God has been faithful to me and my children and even my husband out there, Lord. You know, this past few weeks, the you know, sisters, we had decided to have a trained prayer. And with that, in all the time I go through, I never really sit down and study and in we are in starting to study that the chain prayer that we are having it brings me to our consciousness and I start seeing well I start realizing like, what is the problem? Lord, you know, you're trying to search for which way to go and how to pray and you get to realize well like it has no problem, you know? <laughs> it's like what you are saying is a problem all this time and mixing matters is really simple thing that God is more than able to take care of and Amen. And when you train prayer I know a time I just say I'm and in my mind I feel like my husband gone out there and he wants to go, let him go, you know? And like I don't want him back, I don't want him to, to fight off with him, but I get to realise, you know, that I was new and and I thank God for the consciousness that had was so brought to me that I could pray earnestly and not just leave it like that because I know God, God is more neighbor. He had been with me in spite because he protected me, my children, healthy. And I know that if God could do for me, he could do for anybody. And I just want to give him the praise and the and glory as he's more than able to keep us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I just want to come to the others from me. Come with us. Take over for me from here. Amen. Just a little tired, so I was up to St. Tree this morning. But I, 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 I'll hear some of the back too. 